Please make sure you copy down the Fantastic Four before you begin the rest of the notes for today. Hi guys, welcome to the EOC practice test form B. Please make sure you've copied down the Fantastic Four formulas and forms that we write down every day with today's date, which is 425.22. All right, let's begin. So number one, in a data set with a normal distribution, the mean is 24.8 and the standard deviation is 2.9. So just like on practice form A, we're gonna make our bell curve, putting the mean in the center. And then I'm gonna count up by 2.9 going to the right and down by 2.9 going to the left. Go ahead and hit pause if you need to throughout this entire video so that you have time to copy down the notes. All right, part A says, what percent of the data lies between 19 and 27.7? So between 19 and 27.7 are these three sections. So I'm gonna add those percentages together and I get 81.8%. For part B, complete about 99% of the, complete about 99% of the data lies between what two numbers? So remember 99.7% is um, 3, three standard deviations above and below. So that's including the three to the left and three to the right. So you're gonna add everything except for the 0.1%. So if you look, um, you're going to be all the way from these two point ones to the center. So that would be from 16.1 up to 33.5. And then we're gonna to skip to number four, just because it's on the screen. Omar and Ted have a total of 25 books. Omar has five less than twice the number of books Ted has. Use a graph to find how many books each boy has. So if they both together have 25, that would be O plus T equals 25. And then if Omar has five less than twice the number, I'm going to subtract five, and then twice the number of, of Ted would be two T. So I wrote it in slope intercept form so that um, I can easily graph it. And remember the O is standing for Omar, not for zero. So for the first one, that's like what we did for the test form A, where we had those are the two intercepts. So if I plug zero into um, Omar, I would get T equals 25. And if I plug zero into T, I would get Omar also equals 25. And that just means that Omar could have all 25 books and Ted has nothing. And then Ted could also have all 25 books and Omar has nothing. You will have to make your graph a little bit larger just because um, the graph is too small for this question. Go Savas. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna make the two points and then connect my line. That's the first equation. Second equation is starting at negative five. So I do have to make that lower as well and go up by two over by one. So if I go actually an equivalent fraction to positive two, I could change it to eight fourths and it's a little bit easier on this um, graph. So if I go up eight over two, I mean up eight over four, up eight over four, I can make my other line and they cross each other about right there between when X is 10 to, X, to Y is 15. So what that means is Omar has 10 books and I said $10, it should have been 10 books. And Ted has 15 books. So ignore that it says um, dollars. It should just say books. Let me get rid of that really quick. Oop. I'm not editing this, so you're just gonna have to enjoy. There we go. Okay. And I'll write books. Why not? There we go. All right, so that's number four. Nope, oh, I changed it accidentally afterwards. Okay, there we go. Okay, so number two, simplify, decide whether each number is rational or irrational. So remember if the two different sides of the problem are the same, then it's rational, and if they are different, it's irrational. So for square root of six over three, that is not a perfect square, square root of six, so that's irrational. And also the square root of 12 is not a perfect square, so that's also irrational. So then that's rational because they're both irrational numbers. So remember if they are the same, it's rational. If they're different, it's irrational. 
The second one both has the square root of nine in the denominator. Those are going to turn into three. So one third plus one third will be a, another fraction. So you can actually keep that rational. So for the third one, because they are both irrational, that will be rational. And then for the fourth one, we've got a mixed number times a non-perfect square. So the mixed number is rational and the non-perfect square is irrational. So that makes an irrational answer. And then the last, we've got two non-perfect squares, though those are the same, so that will be rational. All right, we're gonna go over to number five. So again, just like the previous question that was similar to this in the other packet, we have to see how does the y values change for each of the two equations. So we have four is increasing to 5.25, 4.5 is increasing to 5.75, and five is increasing to 6.25. So it's probably easier to look at these two columns and you can easily see they just added 1.25 each time to the y value. So we're gonna add 1.25 to our y value from our original equation. So instead of it being a three, it's gonna be 4.25. And then we have to figure out what did they change about k to make it 4.25. So we're going to plug it into the original equation where x would normally be, and we're going to make it equal to the 4.25. So remember, this part when you distribute is going to be um, the 4.25. So we set that equal to 4.25 because in the end we want it to be 0.5x plus 4.25. So I just took this out of the problem and I'm going to set it equal to 4.25 so that I can solve it separately. So I'm going to subtract 3 and then divide by 0.5 and I get 2.5. So that means my k value is 2.5. Again, don't forget to pause this if you need to. All right, number three. So find the solution to the system of equations. So because they both equal y, we can make them equal each other. So I'm gonna set them equal to each other and solve for x. And if you notice, all of the x values in the answers are all different. So once I find my x value, I can find my answer pretty easily. So I'm going to subtract five first and then add 2x to the other side. I'm doing two steps in one line. And I just converted that, decimal, uh, that mixed number, the two and one third, to an improper fraction. So if you don't remember, that's multiplying three times two and add it to one. So that's seven thirds. And then I am going to multiply by its reciprocal to get rid of the fraction next to the x. And so on this side, I'm multiplying negative seven times three and dividing it by seven. So I get negative 21 divided by seven, which is negative three. And the only answer that has negative three for the X value is C. So just to show you, you can plug your negative three back into either equation. I chose the second one just because this is um, a normal equation without a fraction. It's just a little easier to use. So that turns into six minus two, which is four. And you can see that that is four for the Y value. So we have the right one. All right, number six. So let f of x equal six minus x, g of x equal f of x plus two, and h of x equal g of five of x. What are the slope and y-intercept of the graph of the function? So I'm going to take my f of x and I'm gonna put f of x plus two. So wherever x is in f, I'm writing x plus two. So that's why I rewrote the g of x line to be six minus x plus two instead of just six minus x. And it's important when you're plugging something in to put parentheses around it because this is a minus sign. So that's actually meaning that there's a negative one there. So you're gonna distribute your negative one into the parentheses. It does not mean um, that you're just subtracting it from six. So I have to distribute that negative one in which changes the problem to four minus X after you combine like terms. And now we're gonna take that and it says for H of X, I'm gonna replace X with five X. So instead of writing X, I'm writing five X. But again, put it in parentheses because that's actually gonna turn into negative five X. So then my answer, I'm gonna rearrange it so that it has it in slope intercept form, Y equals MX plus B. So this is my Y intercept and that is my slope. All right, next one. Number eight, what is the constant ratio indicated by the function in the table? So constant ratio just means that you have to find the difference in how it's changing. So first thing is you notice that the X values are consecutive, negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. That's important because if it's not consecutive, you can't do what we're gonna do. So what I'm gonna do first is to see the ratio, I have eight divided by negative two, 
4 divided by negative 1, zero, uh, 4 negative 4 divided by 1, and 2 divided by negative 8, or negative 8 divided by 2, which is the same thing. Um, so if you look, rise over run, the constant ratio is negative 4. And this is probably um, a quadratic, which is the reason why I flipped the second or the last one is because when you're multiplying, it ends up being a positive. So the ratio is negative 4 throughout the entire function. All right, number nine, solve two to the power of three over x times two to the power of seven over x equals 64. So because they both have the same base of two, I can just add the two exponents together. So I'm gonna add three plus seven is 10 and then the denominator is x. So I have two to the 10 over x power equals 64. So in order to do this, you actually have to change the 64 to have a base of two as well. So you have to use your calculator and figure out two to what power equals 64. And that would be two to the sixth power. And what you do is when you have two bases are the same, you can drop the bases and set the two exponents equal to each other. So I'm gonna drop those bases and make it equal to just the exponents. So 10 over six, or 10 over x equals six. And now I'm just gonna solve for x. So first I need to get the x out of the denominator. And then I'm gonna divide by six and I get 5 thirds after I simplify the fraction. So my x value is 5 thirds, um, and that is completing this problem. All right, going down to the next one. So number 10, find the missing value that makes the equation true. So just like we did on the previous practice problem, we're going to first distribute our um, numbers on each side. So I have six that's gonna go into two minus x, and then I have one half that's gonna go into the right-hand side. And remember, because they're equal to, we have to make them be the same on both sides. So I need to compare the two answers to figure out what is missing. So if you notice, my right-hand side, I have two things that I can combine. So two minus, six, or two minus eight x is the negative six x, and that matches the right-hand side that I had already. So now the only thing that's missing is this 12. So I know one half times a number equals 12. Well. What's double 12 before you took the one half of it? So all I gotta do is try to get rid of one half away from the x. So if I multiply by two, I get 24. And if I multiply it one half times 24, that will give me the 12 that's missing on the other side. So my x value that I'm missing is 24. So in the grid response, you're gonna put 24 on the right-hand side and then bubble two and four. All right, number 11, identify the step in which Hank made a mistake in solving the following literal equation for the variable y. So I'm going to distribute so that I can get the answer to look like what it has in A. And then I'm gonna combine like terms. Actually, I'm gonna first look and see if that's what they got. And they did get exactly the same thing. The signs, the numbers, everything's in the right spot. So it is not A, because I'm looking for the mistake. And then B says subtract six from both sides. So if I subtract six, would that change my problem in a, in a bad way? No, that's fine, you could do that. So did I get five X plus eight Y minus eight equals negative two Y? I did, so that is not the mistake either. And then C said he subtracted eight Y from each side to get five X minus eight. Well, if I subtract eight Y, I can do that because the opposite of positive eight Y is subtracting eight Y. And I got 5x minus 8 equals negative 10y. They got negative 6y. So there's the mistake. It should not be um, negative 6y. And number 12, find the slope in the y-intercept on the graph of the inverse of the function. So inverse means that you just switch the x and the y values. So instead of writing f of x, which is y, equals 3 minus 8x, we're going to write x equals 3 minus 8y. And we solve for y. So when I solve for y, I'm gonna subtract three first, then divide by negative eight, and I get my answer, which is y equals negative one eighths x plus three eight. So this is the inverse of the original function, f of x equals three minus eight x. So all you do is flip the two variables and solve for y. All right. Oh, it says find the slope of the minor sub, so you have to state that. So negative one eighths is the slope, or you could write negative 0 0.125, depends on how the problem's worded. And then your y-intercept is three eighths or 0 0.375. OK, 
Okay, going on to the next one. Don't forget to hit pause if you need more time. All right, number 13, write an expression for each product without a perfect square factor in the radicand. So remember you, you multiply like things. So if you notice there is no other X in the front or anything in the front on the second one. So this X is just gonna stay in the front. And then I'm gonna multiply 12 with 50 and then X with X, cause those are like terms. So I get X squared of 600 X squared. So then you have to simplify. So I know the X squared can come out as an X and it'll multiply with the X that's already out there. But then with 600, I'm gonna to have to break it up into 100, which is a perfect square, and six, which is a non-perfect square. So the 100 will come out as a 10. So this is gonna come out as a 10. Multiply with the X that's already out there. So that's gonna be 10X. And then this X squared is gonna come out as an X. So then that'll turn into 10X squared on the outside and the six will be left on the inside. And that's your final answer for the first one. Then the second one, you're going to multiply like things together again. But remember with this one, you add the exponent. So x squared plus x to the third would be x to the fifth. And remember, we have to figure out how many pairs can you make with x to the fifth. And that would be two pairs with one left over. So it'll be x squared coming out and an x will stay inside. And then for the 450, you have to figure out what is a perfect square that would go into that. And so 225 is actually the biggest perfect square. If you thought of nine, you weren't wrong. It's just not the biggest perfect square. So you wanna be the biggest perfect square you can. So if you did um, nine times 50, 50 has a perfect square and so does nine. So all you do is take the 25 and the nine and multiply it and you'll end up getting your 225. That is the perfect square, the biggest one. All right, so anyway, that'll come out and multiply with the number that's already up front. And then, um, so 225, the square root of that is 15. And then the two pairs of X's that we took out was the X squared. And then um, we're gonna have left behind the other X we couldn't take out and the two we couldn't take out. So you'll have two X left behind. And then the last one, remember, you can only add and subtract if it has the same radic hand underneath. So we have to simplify each one. So this will turn into nine times three. The nine will come out as a three and multiply with the four that's already out front. So four times three is 12. So it turns into 12 squared of three. And then the middle one, you can't simplify anything except for the X squared that can come out as an X and the three will stay under. And then the end, you could simplify 12 into four times three. So four comes out as a two, multiplies with the negative five that's already out front and two times negative five will be negative 10 that's out front. So I wrote that first just so that you can see these will be combined together because they have the same radicand, that square root of three. So I wrote that first and then I'm gonna write the other one after it. So three X squared will turn into the X out front and the square root of three and then 12 minus 10 gives you the two square root of three that's left over. So your answer, um, actually both of them have a square root of three, so you can actually keep going. So instead of being able to add two and x together, I wrote it as a parenthesis, so it'd be two plus x times the square root of three. All right, so that's the last one we're going to do today. So please go to your My Learning, look at your grade, see what you're missing, and work on missing work until the end of the period. Um, make sure that you're behaving. I'm gonna ask Miss Bird for the best behaved class, and you know what that means. Thank you, see you tomorrow.